Today, I'm gonna to show you all about my sourdough starter, how I have a no fuss method for maintaining it. I don't waste flour. Um, he pretty much lives in my fridge all the time. And I'm just gonna show you how I make artisan sourdough bread. I'm gonna take you along for every step of the way. And it starts with feeding my starter. So my starter actually has a name. Comment below if you have named your starter. Um, but this is Alfred Humphrey, is what I've called him. And this is where he lives, in this jar, or a similar jar. Sometimes I use my WEC jar. Um, but today this is the jar I'm gonna be using to feed Alfred Humphrey. So I just pulled him out of the fridge <clears throat> and I'm just going to, um, you can kind of see, that's kind of what he looks like. Um, and I'm going to feed him. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Now here you can see kind of what he looks like. Don't mind all the stuff caked on the edges, that's okay. But um, it's been about a week since I fed him. Um, so he's starting to get a little bit of hooch on top, but not too much yet. I used to always feed my starter one, one, one. Or actually when I first started, I never measured anything. I just would kind of eyeball it, add some flour, add some water, mix it and I kept it in this ginormous um, glass, like gallon container. Oh, it was probably more than a gallon actually in my refrigerator. Um, but I, I found that I really don't need to maintain that much starter for the amount of baking that I do. Also, I found that feeding it just a one to one, one ratio. So that means one part starter, one part flour, one part, part water. Um, over time, eventually, my starter got to be really runny and acidic and it was not rising well. It was not a healthy starter. So now I feed a one to two ratio. So that means I have one part starter, two parts flour, two parts water. So that's what I'm gonna show you today and I actually do measure now. And that gives me a nice thick, really thick stringy starter um, that's just beautiful to work with and it gives really nice rise on my bread and my things that I bake. So I'm going to show you exactly how I measure things out and how I let my starter grow. Okay so I just have a simple kitchen scale. Yes it's kind of dirty because it's very well loved and I don't always <clears throat> um, clean it probably as much as I should but it's just flour and water on there. So first you turn it on and then I put this, put my jar on and tear it to zero. And I wanna make sure that it's measuring in grams. All right, so there we go. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna take some of my starter and just put it in here. Um, sometimes recipes will call for specific amounts of starter <clears throat> and you know water that you add. Uh, so if, if I'm following a specific recipe for that, then I definitely, you know, go by their recommendations. But otherwise, if I'm just wanting to make artisan bread and, you know, make a few things with my starter, I don't really do exactly. So that's 97, so almost 100. Let's add just a little bit more here to get it to 100 grams of starter. <clears throat> No, that's a little over, but it's okay. So then I'm going to um, make it go to zero again. And then I'm gonna add my flour. I use um, wheat Montana, and I do use white flour to feed my starter. Um, that's how I maintain it. So I'm gonna add twice as much flour as I had starter. So I had 100 grams of starter, I'm gonna add 200 grams of flour. Okay, and then I'm gonna make it go to zero again, or you can just add it to the value that's already there. <clears throat> I'm gonna add 200 grams of water. A mm, little over, but again, it'll be okay. <laughs> so then I'm just gonna take my spoon and give it a good stir. Mix it really good. You want to make sure there's not lots of flour lumps. Okay. 
Okay. There we go. It's now ready to rise. So I'm just gonna put the lid on it. And I'm gonna put it um, in a warm place in my kitchen to rise. Okay, then I do put a rubber band around where, where it's at so I can see how much it has doubled or how much it has risen. But I'm just gonna take this and put it right here in a warm place in my kitchen. This is just an open cabinet I have in my kitchen and I'll show you what it looks like after a while. And as for what's left of my original starter that I just got out of the refrigerator, I'm just going to cover him back up, put this kind of around him, and I'm gonna put him right back in my refrigerator where he'll stay until I'm ready to feed him again and use something. Okay, so this is about 11 hours after I fed my starter. Um, about four or five hours in, it was about here, which is probably good enough to use. But um, now it is perfectly ready to use in a recipe. Okay, so I already have my water in here for my artisan loaf, okay? And I've, I'm going to um, put it back to zero and I'm gonna measure out my starter. So I have water in my bowl and now I'm gonna measure out my active starter. Ooh, look at that, look how nice that looks. All right, just put it right in the water. A little bit more. All right, that's a little over, but that will be all right. Um, when you're using whole grain flour especially, you need a little more starter to get it to rise um, to rise better. So then I'm gonna take my dough whisk. If you don't have one of these, they are excellent for sourdough, for muffins, for all kinds of things. So um, I'll put a link in the description box if you'd like to get your own. But I found mine at Ross for like $3. So I'm just gonna give it a good stir. So the starter is all mixed in with the water. All right, and then it's time to add the flour. So um, again, Wheat Montana is my favorite flour. This is their Prairie Gold 100% white whole wheat. <clears throat> um, so. I'm just gonna add, add the flour and then we're gonna mix it again. I'm gonna take my dough whisk and I'm just gonna mix it together until it becomes a really lo um, loose, shaggy dough. It's not gonna look beautiful um, like bread dough. It's gonna look kind of lumpy, but that's okay. We're just gonna incorporate it until um, the water's all been incorporated with the flour. Okay. Kind of like that. And then I just get try to get all the extra out of my whisk here. And I scrape down the sides a little bit to make sure everything's together. All right. Then I'm just gonna cover this with a towel and I'm gonna let it set for half an hour and then we're gonna add the salt. Okay, so it's been over half an hour. So I'm gonna add salt now and I'm gonna use my fingers to just get it all in there and incorporate it really well. So I just sprinkle it all over the top and then it helps to get your fingers um, a little bit wet so the dough doesn't stick to you quite as bad. And just kind of with a pinching motion, just kind of 
get the salt all incorporated there. All right, then you're gonna do a first turn and fold or stretch and fold is what it's called. Um, and this will get easier as time goes on. The first one is a little more difficult because the bread hasn't developed those good gluten strands quite yet. But to stretch and fold, you just kind of take one side, pull it up, turn it over. Then you're gonna rotate it, pull it up, turn it over. Rotate it, pull it up and over, and one more time. So a total of four turns. All right, there we go. So that's what it should look like. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna cover it, let it rest for 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and do another stretch and fold. Okay, it's been 15 minutes, so we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna do a series of stretch and folds. So I'm gonna get a little bit of water on my hands and just start on the one corner. Just pull it up, I shake it a little bit, pull it up and over. Rotate the bowl. Do the same. Rotate again, fold it over, and one more time. Okay, I'm gonna cover it again, and in 15 minutes, we'll come back and do another one. Okay, so I'm getting ready to do the final stretch and fold. Um, so I'm just gonna do it one more time. And actually I left um, a little more time, but not just 15 minutes, it's been actually quite a while. Um, and I think I've done five or six stretch and folds. So the more stretch and folds you do, the better those gluten strands develop. But you can see this is kind of what it looks like now. It's a nice dough, um, still soft, but that's the way it's supposed to be. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it in a bag and I just use a Walmart bag or grocery bag, put my bowl in there, tie it like that, and then I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator for overnight. So it is like three o'clock in the afternoon right now. And I'm just gonna put it in overnight and then tomorrow morning I'll take them out, shape them and bake them. Okay, so my dough has been in the refrigerator overnight um, and I'm, I've taken it out and I'm gonna let it sit for just a little while, an hour or two till it comes almost to room temperature. Um, but you can see it's nice and puffy and then we're going to take it out, put it on the counter and kind of roughly shape it into two loaves. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this out onto the counter. Sometimes I put a little bit of flour, sometimes I don't. And I'm just going to divide it into two pieces. and I'm just gonna kind of give it a rough shape. <clears throat> then I kind of turn it around a little bit um, and it sticks to the counter just a little. That helps to create some tension along the top. And then I'm just gonna let it set. Okay, there we go. So I have my two loaves. I'm just gonna let them sit for half an hour and then I'll come back and put them in the baskets. Okay, so I've let these rest for half an hour. So now it's gonna be time to do the final shaping and then I'm gonna put them in my baskets. Now, I have these um, 
baskets. I have a larger one and a smaller one. And they came with, you know, covers, but the covers got really nasty really fast. So I just use tea towels <clears throat> and um, sprinkle my flour on them. But you don't have to have a special basket. You can just use any bowl. I've used Tupperware bowls just fine. Just layer it with a towel, sprinkle your flour, and it's fine. So for the final shaping, I just kind of slap and fold and slap and fold and slap and fold. And then I tuck, kind of tuck and roll it. Okay, and again, I turn it to create some tension on the top, make sure it's all tucked under. Then I have this little plastic sieve that I just put some flour in and I just sprinkle all around. And then I'm gonna take this and put it upside down in there, okay? So now this is ready to go in the fridge for two hours and then we're gonna bake it. All right, so I've had my bread in the refrigerator for two hours. So now I've taken it out. And in the meantime, while the bread was chilling in the fridge, I took my um, Dutch oven, my cast iron Dutch oven, and I put it in the oven at 450 degrees for an hour, just empty with the lid and everything to preheat my Dutch oven. So now I'm gonna take parchment paper, I'm gonna turn this out onto the parchment paper. I'm going to score it, and then I'm gonna put it in the oven, in the, the pot, and in the oven with the lid on for half an hour. Then I'm gonna take the lid off and bake it for 13 more minutes with the lid off, and then it's gonna be ready. So let me show you what it looks like to get it ready to put in the Dutch oven. So I just put my parchment paper over top of this, and then, Turn it upside down. All right. Now, there are lots of fancy things that you can get for scoring, but I usually use my tomato knife or kitchen shears. So that's what I'm gonna do today. And I'm just gonna give it a nice cut there and then I'm just gonna do some decorative cuts along the edge all right that's all it doesn't have to be fancy and now I'm gonna put it in my Dutch oven Okay, so we're gonna put it back in for about um, 13 more minutes to kind of brown the top. Okay, I just took it out of the oven. This is after 13 more minutes and it looks great. So I'm gonna get it on a wire rack to cool completely. So there you have it. That's all you have to do to make artisan sourdough bread. Now I know you're probably saying, that's all you have to do? Sarah, that looks like a lot of work. Well, it's not really a lot of work. It's just time. You have, you do have to plan ahead and it does take, you know, it's a couple day process, but usually I feed my starter before I go to bed at night. So when I get up in the morning, it's ready to use. I mix the dough, I put, I do the stretch and folds, I put it in the fridge and then it stays there till overnight. So it's, you know, there for quite a while. And then the next day I shape the loaves, refrigerate them for two hours, 
and then I bake them. So there are two loaves and I only showed you how I did one of them in the oven. But whenever you take the loaves out, when you take the first loaf out, I go ahead right away and score the second loaf. I use the same piece of parchment paper that I used the first time and I put the second loaf in and bake it as well for the same amount of time. So that's how I do it. It makes two loaves at a time. Sometimes I make three loaves at a time. I do a recipe and a half because my family really goes through the bread and I don't like to be, I don't like to make it every two days. So I most of the time will make at least three loaves at a time. I have doubled the recipe completely and done four loaves at a time. And that makes for um, a long afternoon of baking. But again, it's not hard. You just have to think about it. And it does take a little bit of time and planning. So these are the two loaves that I made. Okay. These are um, made with white whole wheat flour. So they're completely on plan for Trim Healthy Mama. These are a great e-fuel. And I'm gonna put a link in the description box below to the recipe that I use for um, this bread. And they also have a just regular white flour version if you ever needed to try that for some reason. You can search for that on their site. But um, I hope this was helpful. When I first started doing sourdough, I searched and searched and searched lots of YouTube channels looking for just an easy way to use sourdough. And I hope that this video is helpful to you if you're just getting started, that you can see that you don't have to feed your starter every day and waste a lot of flour and use, um, use up discard. But it's a simple no fuss method of just feed it when you need, when you need it. And that's what I've been doing and it's worked great for me so far. All right. I hope you will enjoy some bread and I think I'm going to enjoy some right now maybe.